And that's the thing. Your sexual drive is your most powerful drive. But if you allow it to consume you, you'll lose sight of everything greater than yourself and the dopamine to which you're addicted. Which is why Dr. Unwin concluded that as societies develop, they become more sexually liberal, which diminishes the social entropy of the society, which is just a sociological term. This sort of means the momentum or sustainability, along with its creative and expansive energy or its capabilities to produce culture and gain power. Does that ring a... I've never heard anyone who sounds like they're more dominated by their penis than this individual, where it's just like you've turned sex into this weird thing where it is a constant war going on in your own head at all times. Yeah, John Doyle's the worst. You might know John Doyle is one of the people who's really trying to advocate for people to retain their semen. He's one of the semen retention soldiers, as in do not coom. He, despite the fact that he looks like the character that the coomer face was modeled over, is uh, very adamant about not cooming. A couple months ago, in the literal shithole that is San Francisco, a woman came across a common phenomenon in the increasingly decaying urban centers of our country. They used to be places that drew people from all across the world. Like these were the crown jewels of our country in terms of man's capability on full display. But now you just see a bunch of people shooting up heroin, uh, defecating on the sidewalks, and of course having sex on the sidewalks. So anyways, this woman comes across this and she takes a photograph of it so that she can tweet about it and basically ask people, hey, is this something that we're just supposed to be okay with? Are we just, is this what we're doing now? This is cool, this is fine. And almost every reply to this tweet was from left-wing people basically saying, why don't you mind your own business? Let people enjoy things. You, sir, are an asshole. And that's how you know that you're not actually speaking to a real person, but rather a lemming. Like there's a certain speech pattern and an insult pattern that these people always fall into because the volume of their brains are filled by reddit.com. Like the whole, you, sir, that thing, you're an asshole. Stop being mean to people. And a lot of you might even echo the sentiment of those replies, which a lot of them were like, well, you know, why'd you feel compelled to take a picture of it? That's weird. You shouldn't have done that. I get that. Think of the implication of that, though. Obviously, in public, you have no reasonable expectation of privacy, especially on a sidewalk in downtown San Francisco. So to say, hey, don't take a photo, that's weird, kind of acknowledges that what's happening in the photo is weird and probably shouldn't be happening there in the first place, right? And we can't really discuss the problem if no one's even calling attention to it, right? But regardless uh, of how silly this might be, this is actually indicative of some trends in society that we should discuss, especially considering how the replies to this were all people basically defending the people in the photo. So we will go over the results of the moral decline and the slippery slope in this country, how the left has totally inverted reality, whether it's even possible to reconcile with these people, and the truth about sexual liberation and its effects on culture throughout history. So do stay tuned. The, the sexual liberation movement is not for the right for people to have sex on the streets in public. That's not, not a part of it. Welcome to Heck Off Commie. It's a big day today. It's Friday. And the new official Heck Off Commie merch is now live on the website, heckoffcommie.com. And we're doing great things. So the, well, you're just as bad because you stopped to take a picture of it. You're the one who's weird and study this because this is actually a perfect example of something that a stupid person would think a smart person would say because obviously it's not as weird, but it is a little bit weird. And the context is really what matters because if someone were taking pictures of people having sex in their house, that's one thing. But this is in public and- I'm just gonna get past these But you know what? So this is too far. Bone. This is where my personal line of decency is crossed. Do you see how there's no appeasing these people, how they will never stop? Yeah, like it's not legal for you to have sex in public, first off. Secondly, uh, like the, the process of just poverty shaming doesn't solve poverty or, or get rid of the problem. So if you're just like, well, if I just take a whole bunch of pictures of people on heroin or people having sex on the street or people defecating publicly and then I post them on the internet so everyone realizes how disgusting and gross that we all find them, then hopefully these people who definitely will be accessing the internet to use and then find these pictures will realize it as well. And so that process is going to eventually result in less poverty. And again, the reason this is important is because the replies to this weren't even making excuses for this behavior. Some of them were, but they were mostly just people basically saying that people should be able to do what they want and have fun and you should look the other way. And when they say, no, you're the weird one for taking a picture, that's like the seething Wojak holding the mask up, the seething mask to the other Wojak. It's a total projection. It's a total cope. No, both things can be like, it's not legal for people to have sex in public, first off. And secondly, I don't see what you are doing to help solve systemic poverty or even poverty in general by then being like, well, now I'm going to shame these people publicly. That's, you know. If you had a glass and you filled it with like how weird this was, for that to be going on in public, you couldn't honestly say that the glass would be filled with the same amount more when the picture was taken because they're not equally weird. Like one requires the other to happen first. And maybe you'll say, well, this was an isolated incident. It's not like you see it everywhere you go. Yeah, maybe not exactly like this, but we see the pride parades and we see the calls for children to being. <laughs> and this is just like pride, identical, one to one. Included in the displays of weird fetishes to teach them about LGBT culture, which is so. S no, that's not a thing. I mean, it's a discourse, but it's not a thing. Self aware that it actually has bounced back into being totally oblivious. You see sex on display all throughout the culture. Kids are getting addicted to pornography. 
It's carpeted throughout social media, throughout all other forms of media, in their schools, everywhere. And they'll say, well, good, because kids need to be learning about sex at an early age, and they'd rather have it done by the degenerate American culture than by parents. Because if parents have control over their child's perception of sex, then they might actually, I don't know, instill some morality into it. And we can't have that because it makes the coomers feel guilty. And here's the inversion of reality that we are experiencing less than 70 years after the sexual revolution, where the most intimate matter is now on full public display, something that should be a private act. Not because it's something to be ashamed of. That's what they say because they're coping. Do you think them doing something that you just described as something people do in the comfort of their own bedrooms might have something to do with them not having bedrooms to do that in? I'm, I'm just going to throw that out there. And seething at all times, but because it's something that was given to us as a way to create life and to express love and to bond to your wife or to your husband, it's special. There's significance to it. Now it's been reduced to just another sideshow. Everything that made it significant has been eroded. Now it's just basically like co-op masturbation. And this is what left-wing thinking does. It accelerates the based. cultural entropy of society. <laughs> Right-wing thinking tries to maintain stability and order against exactly that, because this is what always happens when left-wing thinking propagates every time. Just think about how it started. Remember when they said, well, they said, well, it's none of your business. This is such a like, ridiculous straw man. There's no one on the left who's advocating for people to be able to have sex publicly on the streets hope and the private individual's argument are on full display in public where you and your children have to see it you are told to just mind your own business if this is where we are now compared to even 10 years ago imagine where we're going to be 10 years from now assuming that we don't change things just imagine <clears throat> speaking of thinking ahead it's almost time to start thinking about the holidays and the first item on your list needs to be the item I'm always impressed that these people, no matter how radical their beliefs, manage to find tons and tons of sponsors. I'm crackhead people just going at it in public, right? And even that implies that we're correct, that it's wrong and that it shouldn't be happening. Like, the reason that they are turned on by it is because they know that they shouldn't be doing it. These people are so perverted that it's not enough for them anymore to just put their hand in the cookie jar. They're like, no. They're homeless. I'm assuming they didn't have a home in which to do that. It's like, how does this apply to anyone else you're talking about? This is not, this is a non-issue. I want to be caught doing it. I need you to watch me do it. And everything is so backwards these no, days. No one is advocating for that to happen. We actually have been blessed with a very useful metric for determining whether something is bad for people and society as a whole. And the metric is that basically anything that's being promoted in the mainstream culture is probably terrible for your soul and for society. And sexual liberation is no different. And the reason for that is because it destabilizes and corrodes society and it makes you a slave to the system. This has been done before throughout history with very bad. What is wrong with the dude twerking on the street? That's this is degenerate too. This is a dance. He's dancing what results but left-wing people because they're so narcissistic they think that they're the first people to come and also like impressive like that was that was that was definitely an impressive combination about twerking and the splits up with this idea of sexual immorality because they view everything throughout history as linear which is why they can pretend that we're making progress when in actuality history is cyclical it repeats itself time is a flat circle and there's this great book that i've recommended before and of course you get the whole list of book recommendations on the website when you're a member but it's called sex and culture and wait do you keep your book behind a paywall oh you're sorry your recommendations behind a paywall great just pay a little bit of money and then i'll give you my specific reading list that you should all be indoctrinated by only for true fans. sex conventions and abstinence, nations could channel their sexual energy into aggressive expansion, conquer less energetic countries, as well as successfully <laughs> cultivate achievements in the arts and sciences. And that's the thing. Your sexual drive is your most powerful drive. But if you allow it to consume you, you'll lose sight of everything greater than yourself and the dopamine to which you're addicted. Which is why Dr. Unwin concluded that as societies develop, they become more sexually liberal, which diminishes the social entropy of the society, which is just a sociological term. This sort of means the momentum or sustainability, along with its creative and expansive energy or its capabilities to produce culture and gain power. Does that ring a... I've never heard anyone who sounds like they're more dominated by their penis than this individual, where it's just like you've turned sex into this weird thing where it is a constant war going on in your own head at all times. Well, does that sound familiar to you? That is the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen. That is the Western world. It is dying. We are dying because you have two options, essentially. You can either subject your desires to the truth or you can subject the truth to your desires. And if you are governed by your desires, then everything in the world will be viewed through that lens. And you won't ever be able to arrive at the truth because you're so clouded and distracted by your carnal desires. And if you can get a whole population like that, then you can get them to believe anything and you can have total control over them. And that's where we're at now. So the question then becomes, how do we reconcile with these people? How do we come together under one flag with people who want your kids to be seen this in public or at least who don't care and think that you should just mind your own business you know we used to be able to say ah, we agree on the problems we just have different solutions to the problems really what's the problem here that people can't have sex in public we're approaching a very dangerous no one is asking for that what are you talking about i i, I mean 
you know, citation needed. Show me uh, uh, the prominent left that is saying, oh, by the way, we, we deserve the right for everyone to have sex in public in front of everyone else. Just points in our history where the people are so divided and the culture and society are so unstable that we need this huge government to come in just to keep things from collapsing. But at the same time, that government is occupied by actors who are hostile to half of the people over whom they govern and who literally believe in the terrible ideas that lead to things like this, that create mentally ill people, that create homelessness, that create sexual degenerates, that destroy society. And then they tell you, hey, mind your own business, asshole. This is my business. The moral fabric of my country is my business. And our problem is that we're living through the consequences of people pretending that it wasn't for like two generations. And that's the, the biggest problem with all this. If, if you are concerning yourself so much with the private functions of other adults, you're never going to be truly happy. You're constantly going to be sitting there and being like, just wondering if my neighbors are engaging in sodomy right now. There's no way for me to know, but I mean, they probably are. And I need to police that sodomy because sodomy is a sin. Chance is blown, <laughs> is dead. What the fuck? Oh, it's, oh, God. He didn't put up the link, so it's just like, how many minutes is this? Two, three, four, five minutes of him just playing guitar? They're literally erecting statues in, uh, in his honor. You know, at least the golden calf was aesthetically appealing. That's just, it's very funny to me. <laughs> just, Chance is blown. Oh, God, it's so painful. I can't do it. I <laughs> Wow. I mean, that's one way to pad your videos. That's for sure. Did you? Okay, there you go. <laughs> they just pop up at the very end. <laughs> Why is this so long? I just got to give my fans what they really want, you know? They really want to hear my, my parody songs. I'm kind of like the, the non kumin Weird Al. That's, that's what they know me for. Ugh, that was, that was so bad. Um, yeah, I mean... Very simple read on this. Uh, there's no one asking for people to have the right to have sex in public. I think from any party politically that I, I don't know, maybe and prims. But I mean, your issues with and prims, maybe maybe that's part of return to monkey. I don't know. But uh, every everyone else I know is, is pretty much uh, in accordance with no, that that isn't a thing that people should do or do. For the most part, you're, you're basically vilifying uh, the poor and homeless people who are doing actions on the street. <sighs> I, John Doyle's the worst. Do you enjoy the surfs, but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs? Many are saying this. Well, we've got the solution for you. It's the Surf Times in podcast form. Available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free. Just like the podcast. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just, we are prepared to embark on a mighty jihad in your name. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are but your humble jesters, attempting in vain to get you to laugh. To our valiant knights of the round table, Benji Arnie, Tech Tink, Scary Urculin, Tony, DM Rivera, Resident Scarecrow, Sir Nickus, Mayred, Cheryl Alvarez, Ruby Kelly, Brandon, Words Greenwood, It doesn't matter what I believe, it only matters what I can prove. Hagbird Celine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Marianne McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, Coulter Smith, Jenna Tao, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, The Tim Caucus, Multimondi, Trevbot, EXE, Brian Ephraim, Lemmy101, Anthropophojack, Saren42, Catherine, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Agent NDN, Violent Orchard, Political Puppy, La Media Panza, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We raise our mugs and salute our brave heroes off to another glorious conquest.